Hello everyone, my name is Greg and welcome in another devlog for my upcoming puzzle game. First of all, thank you for all the comments that you left under the previous video. There's been a lot of feedback regarding the art style and I'm really happy that you like it. Since the last devlog I've been working on my custom tools for the Unity. Those will help me to build levels much easier than with the default Unity editor. It took me almost 3 weeks to build it, but since I have a full-time job and I can work on this game only in my free time, I am still very happy with the progress. When it comes to level design for this game, there are two main parts. The first one is to create ground, and the second one is to add all the environment elements or the uh, interactable elements and other stuff. And to be honest, you need to default Synvio is not the best tool for either of those two things. You have to add every single asset separately, position it, rotate and maybe scale. And that takes a lot of time when you have a lot of things that you want to place in the scene. But there's also a very good thing about Unity. You can extend its functionality by creating your own scripts. And that's what I did. I'm using tiles to create ground and I have this one main tile that I use to create the general shape and then I put all the side tiles around it to make those round smooth corners. So the idea was simple, I wanted to have a tool that will help me create this main shape and then just generate sides. I figured out that I could use custom handles for that, but I've never done it before, so it was time to Google. After watching a few tutorials, reading through the documentation and through the Unity source code, it was time to start coding. I started simple just by creating a yellow cube and the idea was uh, that I can click on this yellow cube which will generate ground tile and around this tile more cubes would appear which we could click again and generate more tiles and so on. After a few issues I ended up with something like this. As you can see, once I click on the yellow cube, it will be replaced with the red uh, sphere and that will basically represent the ground tile. So all I had to do now was just instantiate the actual tiles in the same position as spheres. And after a while I had a really nice tool to generate the shape and it was time to tackle the sides problem which was not as simple as I thought and it took me also a few iterations mainly because my calculations was wrong in many places. As you can see I achieved a lot of different solutions, not exactly as planned, but finally after a bunch of changes I achieved what I wanted to. In the end I decided that the side generation can be done on the button click because it was a bit laggy when I did it after each tile change and it wasn't really necessary to do it so often. The last feature that I needed in this tool was to generate ground with different height, so I added a simple slider with predefined values between 1 and 5. This can be easily changed, but for now it is enough, and this way I could easily generate anything I needed. I am super happy with the final result, and I think it will really speed up the level design process. With the first problem resolved, I could focus on the second tool, and here I wanted to create something that will help me to paint a lot of different environment elements over the ground. By default Unity supports only snap to grid, so again I had to come up with my own solution. I started to experiment with raycasting, and it was surprisingly easy to make it work. At first I just drew a cube over the ground, but then I added this super awful UI to the scene view, and I could choose my own objects. After the initial implementation, it was time to refactor the code, create a bit nicer UI, add a race tool and a few other options that I will discuss in a moment. The final implementation looks like this. There is a slider with all the available assets that I want. Uh, there are also two options for the tools. There is paint and erase. Once we select the paint tool, we can choose between the assets and use the left mouse button to instantiate copies over the ground. I've also added shortcuts for rotation and scale, so I don't really have to change the properties of an object with the inspector, I can just use keyboard shortcuts. There is also an additional option when it comes to snapping on the Y-axis. 
Not every asset should snap to the ground, so I've implemented snap to grid option. And in the case that asset doesn't snap to the ground, there will appear a semi-transparent overlay that will indicate the height on which we are actually operating. This tool has its own window, so I can easily enable or disable it. And I can also provide a configuration. And the configuration is a scriptable object. It contains a list of items. Each item has a prefab and snapping options, so I can very easily define how certain items should behave. So with those two tools, I think I should be able to really speed up the development process, test new ideas at a lot of different levels, and in general, improve the development. That would be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you want to be notified about new devlogs, please subscribe. And I hope to see you soon.